Welcome back to the 62nd part in the Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one, we're going to talk about the requirements and how we can separate them for our different environments. Pretty much sort of like we've done the settings files at the moment. So, in the sense that we have uh, one settings file for each of the environments that we intend to run our project in. So we have one settings file for development, production, and the base settings itself, uh, where the majority of the settings are. Now that's a similar sort of structure that I want to sort of transfer across to the requirements. Now a requirements file, if you're not too familiar with why you need a list of requirements, is very useful if you want to try to perhaps bring another developer into your project to work on with you. Now you'll each have a computer, but they'll need to get set up. And for that they need to install each of the Python de dependencies that your project is running on. And not only that, they need the correct versions of those dependencies. Now that's probably not an issue if you've only got Django as a dependency or possibly if you've got two or three dependencies. But as soon as you start to work with more real world style projects, you're going to find that those dependencies, the list of dependencies gets much, much longer. And you need a way of much more quickly being able to install them all at once with the correct versions. So that's pretty much why I'm going to separate them so that it's just uh, going to make it much more maintainable and uh, it's going to avoid version conflicts in the future, especially if that dependency list were to grow at all. Let's start then by creating a virtual environment where I want to be able to install all those dependencies within. So let's go ahead and exit out of the development server and I'm going to, first I'm going to uninstall Django, so that's just pip uninstall Django because I don't want to have it as a global dependency, I only want it to be installed within the virtual environment that I'm about to create. Now it's just asking if I want to confirm, I'm going to say yes, and it's going to go ahead and uninstall Django, in this case 1.10.4. Now I happen to know that the latest version of Django 1.10 that we're using is 1.10.7, so that's going to be the one that I'm going to install just because I know that the project also works on that version. Uh, I'm not going to upgrade to 1.11 just yet because I might talk about the uh, you know, sort of recommended upgrade procedure, you know, checking the release notes and things like that in a future video. I'm going to now create the virtual environment itself. I'm in the project root, so you can see my uh, directory here is Django Tutorial, so this is the main project folder, and I'm going to do python -m vmv and then I'm just going to name the virtual environment, say tutorial env. Uh, so that's going to be the name of the virtual environment. Uh, I've just noticed, so this is going to use the, the default Python interpreter. So the Python interpreter that you specify at this point is going to be the one that is used within the virtual environment. So for me, if I type Python, I'm going to get to Python 2.7.10, as you can see just here. Now, what I want is Python, the latest version of Python 3, which is now Python 3.6. So I always re recommend that you try to stay on the latest version if you can. So that's going to be the one that we're going to use. So I'm going to go back to that command that I was working on just now. And I'm going to do Python 3.6. So that's the version of Python that I always want to use within this virtual environment. Now, it's going to go ahead and create that for me. And now I'm going to activate it by doing source uh, name of the virtual environment, tutorial env bin activate. So all this is going to do is it's going to run a script that changes some of the environment variables in a very clever way that allows us to be able to manage different dependencies without causing version conflicts and things like that. So now you can see that the start of my line here in the terminal changes to show the name in parentheses of the virtual environment. That means it's activated and if we do pip list that we won't have many dependencies. It's just got the two, so pip of course, because we use pip to install things, as well as setup tools, just another default dependency that we get when we create a virtual environment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the code here, and what I want to do is create another folder. And I'm going to, in the tutorial folder here, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it requirements. Now I could just create one file and put all the requirements in that, but like the settings, how we had the single settings and then we split out that out into the base, dev and production settings, I'm going to do the same for the requirements. That means I'm going to create a new file inside the requirements folder. I'm going to call it dev, or in fact let's do base first, I'm going to call it base.txt, so it's a text file, 
and base.txt is where I'm going to put all the common dependencies. Uh, so in this case it's going to be Django, I'm just going to write them out here. Uh, there's a quick way of doing this if you already have a virtual environment, uh, you could do pip freeze and uh, that would just put everything into the file itself, but I'm just going to do it manually because we only have uh, I think one or two dependencies. Um, so let's do Django 1.10.7 and I'm going to do pillow as well because we need pillow uh, if you're not aware because the image field, if you define an image field on a model uh, it uses pillow and if you don't have pillow installed then it will raise an error and you, and you will have to install it uh, to be able to get your image field to work in your model. So since we use that for our, our profile picture, we do need that as well. I think that's on version 4.1.0. So let's go ahead and see if that works. But first I need to create the other two files. So I'm just going to create dev. And I'm also going to create production. So prod, I'm going to call it prod.txt. So now that I've got those created, in dev, what I want to do is I'm going to say dash r at base.txt. So that, all that's saying is it's going to read from the base text file. So that's going to be this. So whenever we uh, install all our dependencies from the dev.txt file, it's just going to automatically look in base. Now, that's also what we want for production, so I'm going to do that. But now it gives us the ability to specify, okay, well, if I want to say uh, add a dependency which I want in development but not in production or vice versa, that's going to be really easy to do because we're always specifying from where we want to install our requirements. So we could say, for example, Fabric is a way of deploying your Django application. And that would go ahead and install Fabric uh, for development, but uh, it wouldn't do that for production, assuming we had this sort of setup. So I'm just going to take that out for now because we don't need that at the moment. But what I want to do is I now want to install those dependencies based on the dev.txt file. So it's going to install Django and Pillow and then it should uh, allow us to run our Django project again. Because just uh, to clarify, at the moment if we run the uh, development server, this won't work. Uh, so it says uh, it couldn't import Django because Django is not installed. So how do we install it from a requirements file? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to do pip install and then instead of just doing a dependency name like for example Django, uh, I'm going to do dash r and then I'm going to specify where the file is. So I think this was tutorial requirements uh, dev.txt. Remember it's dev not base. In this case it wouldn't matter but if we had any uh, dev dependencies then since we're developing then we also want to install them as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's going to go ahead and grab Django 1.10.7 and this might take a little bit of time based on your internet speed or uh, whatever else but that shouldn't take too long and then it should go ahead and install that second dependency pillow and grab 4.1.0 as you can see and I think that's going to take a little bit less it doesn't take too long to install that and now we can go ahead and try to run say uh, the server let's go pythonmanage.py run server and now you can see we're on Django 1.10.7 uh, running our dev settings like we set up in the last video and uh, everything's working so we're not getting any errors which would indicate that we needed to install pillow to get the image fields working because it did all that as well so that's really how you can separate your requirements files uh, so that you can have different dependencies based on your environment be it dev or production so this not only allows you to be able to isolate the actual versions of each of the dependencies uh, by what you call pegging the requirement but also it allows you to remove the duplication for dependencies which are going to be installed regardless of the environment by utilizing that base.txt file and then reading from that uh, in the devil production